Welcome to the next series of content videos. The next few videos will focus on viruses and prions. So remember that what these two types of microbes have in common are that they are not considered to be alive. Okay, we'll talk more about that on the next slide. So please just remember that when I say the term microbe, I'm using it very loosely to include um, all the different types of things that are microscopic. And with this class, we're mainly looking at microscopic disease causing entities, okay? But please remember that technically, viruses and prions are not considered microorganisms because organisms refers to living things and neither viruses or prions are actually considered to be alive. So um, the last video of this series will focus on prions. Uh, we just don't know as much about them, so we don't need as much time in class to talk about them. So the next handful of videos will focus on viruses. So let's talk more about some general characteristics of viruses and why we say they are not a living organism. So viruses are acellular. Remember that the prefix a means without. So viruses are without cells. That means they do not have that phospholipid bilayer um, called the plasma membrane. They don't have a cytoplasm. They don't have organelles. They don't have flagella. They don't have anything that um, we've talked about so far, aside from a couple of macromolecules. And we're going to talk more about their viral structure later, uh, but they do have um, their own type of genetic material, either DNA or RNA, and they do have some viral proteins, okay? But um, all the other structures that we've talked about, they do not have, okay? Um, like I just mentioned, they do have genetic material. It's an either or situation. Some viruses use DNA as their genetic material, some use RNA, but they do not have both, okay? And living things have both DNA and RNA because as we talk about in future classes and videos uh, is that we use DNA to create RNA, which we then use to make proteins, okay? So all living things do have both um, in their cells, but viruses do not have cells and they do not contain both DNA or RNA. On their own, viruses cannot replicate. Okay, so if you, uh, if there was a virus on an inanimate surface, a countertop, your windowsill, a doorknob, a Kleenex, they cannot replicate and create new viruses. Okay, they are completely dependent upon a host in order to replicate. So on their own, they cannot make more viruses. They also do not maintain homeostasis, which is something that living organisms do in order to survive in their environment, right? If we overheat, we start to sweat to cool down. If we're too cold, we start to shiver in order to generate heat. So we respond to our environment and external stimuli in order to maintain the proper conditions that we need to survive and viruses cannot do that. Okay, and they also do not respond to external stimuli like living things do. Um, living things have those four big groups of macromolecules, lipids, carbohydrates, nucleic acids, and proteins. Viruses do not have all four, okay? Um, as I mentioned, they do have genetic material and that genetic material is surrounded and protected by a protein coat called a capsid, which we'll talk more about in a different video, uh, but they do not have all four of those macromolecules that living things need in order to live. Also on their own, a virus cannot uh, produce energy, they cannot do any form of metabolism. Okay, again, they're completely dependent upon their host for sources of ATP, okay? So for these reasons, we refer to viruses as obligate intracellular parasites. Obligate, um, we use that term because again, 
on their own, a virus can do nothing. It cannot replicate, it cannot metabolize, okay? It's completely dependent upon a host cell, a living host cell. Intracellular refers to the fact that viruses must get inside of a living cell in order to replicate. So intra as a prefix means within, so it must get within cells because once it's inside cells, um, it's able to essentially hijack and take over the cell's machinery, ribosomes, um, it uses enzymes, it uses energy from the host in order to make, uh, in order to have new viruses made, okay? So, and then parasites, because this process of making new viruses harms the cell, okay? They're using things the cell needs itself, right? So they're not available to the cell. And because when viruses exit the cell, more times than not, it does so by lysing the host cell. And lysing means bursting, like it literally blows a hole in the cell in order to, to get out. Okay, so it kills that host cell. So that is a parasitic relationship. Okay, so this picture is of um, HSV, which is herpes simplex virus, which is known to cause warts. And you don't need to know the details of this image. Okay, it'll make more sense um, after you've listened to future videos about this process of making new viruses via uh, replication. Um, but essentially, the virus, again, we consider it the architect because it does have genetic material. Again, either DNA or RNA, not both. And that genetic material does provide the information needed to create new viral particles. Okay, notice I did not say organisms. We usually use the term virus or viral particle or entity or agent um, rather than organism. So the virus particle um, contains the information it needs to have new virus particles created. Um, but it needs um, all those raw materials, the supplies um, is what it, to make those virus particles, it steals from the host, okay? So let me know if you all have any questions. I haven't stopped recording. Let me figure out how to do that. Sorry, y'all, there we go. Okay, let me know if you have any questions.